What is the effect of brackets on powers and powers on brackets? Well, essentially, it is to multiply the power. Let's see what I'm talking about. Say we had 3xy squared, and all of that was in brackets, and it was all cubed. What would the value of that be? Well, when you cube something, essentially what you're doing is you're multiplying it by itself three times. So in this case, you'd have 3xy squared times 3xy squared times by 3xy squared. Let's just put a dot instead of a time so you can see what I'm talking about. Cubed means multiplied by itself. So there it is, times by itself three times. Well, what is that going to get you? 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. x times x times x is x cubed. And y squared times y squared times y squared, when you multiply terms with the same base, in this case y, what you can do simply is add the powers. So y squared times y squared times y squared is y6. y to the power of 6. But wait, there's a shortcut for all of that, which is we could have simply multiplied the powers straight away. So notice we have 3xy squared in brackets, or cubed. Well, that's y to the power of 2 has now become y to the power of 6. x to the power of 1, which is just x, has become x to the power of 3. And then you've got 3 cubed. To cut a long story short, when you have a bracket, you can simply multiply the powers. Let's take a different example, a harder one. How about we have 4a squared, c to the power of 4, and all of that is squared. What would that get you? Well, now we know the trick. We can multiply the powers. And I hope you kind of see why that works. It's not just a trick you can learn. It's not just um, a formula to memorize. The reason is literally because when you're cubing or squaring, you've got that many times of the term multiplied. So this cubed is 3xy squared times 3xy squared times 3xy squared. And that's why you can simply multiply the powers. So in this case, though, we have 4a squared c to the power of 4 all of that squared, what do we get? Well, 4 squared is 16. One mistake I see a lot with students is to multiply the powers and then just multiply the number. So they'll get C8 or A4 and that kind of thing, but then they'll get 8 at the front because 4 times 2 is 8. But no, you need to square the actual number. You need to power the number. You can't simply multiply the number. So 4 squared is 16. 8 to the 2 times 2 is a to the 4 and c to the 4 times 2 is c to the 8. What about just a straightforward one where we have to work it out? How about 2 cubed and squared? 2 cubed squared. The question would be something like write down the value of this term. Well, what would that become? We know now from this trick that you need to just multiply the powers. So that would be 2 to the 6. And what is 2 to the 6? 2 to the 6 is 64. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Another way we could have done that question is 2 cubed is 8. And 8 squared is 64. You see, whichever way you do it, you get the same answer. And that kind of proves that this method works. If you multiply the power, it's a nice little shortcut. Let's do one last huge example. So we have 5 p to the power of 4, q to the power of 5, and r, just r on its own. And all of that is going to be cubed. What would you get? Let's do the number first, 5. What would that become? 
Now, it wouldn't be 15, because you wouldn't multiply it. It'd be 5 cubed, which is 5 times 5 times 5. Or, in other words, 125. What would happen to the P? You don't add the term, so it wouldn't be P7. It would be P12, 4 times 3. So, P12. What about the Q? 5 times 3 is 15. So, it would be Q15. And the R, the R on its own, remember, is like R to the power of 1. 1 times 3 is 3, so it would be R cubed. And that's your answer. This is the method for powers and brackets.